What is good YouTube and welcome back to a brand new video. We are back with another off-season realistic rebuild as today we're going to be doing the Houston Texans after they have fired David Coley. Before we get into this video though guys if you could leave a like and of course subscribe if you haven't already to help grow this YouTube channel It'll be greatly greatly appreciated. Now this should be a very long project we have in store today this off-season for trying to put this team back to glory where they used to be. Now one thing I do want to say for David Coley's sake is I don't understand what the thought process was of the Houston Texans if they didn't plan on keeping David Coley past this season. Why even give him a contract to begin with? Honestly, I think he did a decent job, you know, kind of with the circumstances he was given. Didn't have Deshaun Watson. He had this team competing every week, uh, but unfortunately the Texans just did not want to keep him. And now they have to pay him 17 million for the next three years, I think it is. Like, I don't understand why you even hired him in the first place if you weren't going to give him an opportunity to try to rebuild this team because I mean, obviously, he wasn't going to get it done in one year. I don't know what their expectations were. I'm just saying I thought that was kind of weird, but whatever. So, uh, like I said, the Houston Texans, this is going to be a, a huge offseason. Uh, a lot needs to be done here. I'm thinking trading players. I'm thinking of a lot of things here. But let's go ahead and get started with the negotiation stage where we need to try to get some players back. So, looking at the guys we need to resign, I'm seeing a couple of guys here, obviously, that I feel like, uh, you know, right away that I definitely would love to have them back. So, uh, I'm going to go ahead and for sure, we're going to for sure try to get Justin Reed back. We're going to try to make sure we're able to secure him because uh, we need any talent that we can keep around. He's 25 years old. So, you know, letting a free safety walk that, uh, you know, is young would be kind of bad for a team that needs to rebuild. And he's back. So we have that. And you have Desmond King as well. Uh, so we can try to resign him as well to keep another corner on the roster because we're going to need it. So we're boom. We get both those two back. And that's really all I care about. Everyone else, I'm not really... You know, I'm going to be sweating over. So uh, we'll let everyone else walk pretty much or try to resign them. Who knows? I mean, I saw maybe one guy in uh, Malik, not Malik Collins, but Jacob Martin. But uh, if we decide to get to him in free agency, we will. But all right. Next week is before you even hit free agency is I actually want to make like a plethora of trades. First and foremost, we all know the big elephant in the room on this team is Mr. Deshaun Watson. It's time to get Deshaun Watson out of here. It, it just is. So let's just go ahead and get started with that. Deshaun Watson clearly doesn't want to play for Houston. He's been sitting behind. Who knows if he's even cleared to be able to play football anymore? Who, who even knows? So Deshaun Watson, first and foremost, we got to get rid of this guy. So Deshaun Watson, uh, of course, Texans want whatever assets they can get out of them so i'm gonna try to get the best package possible i know immediately there is a team in philadelphia that has three first round picks so i could go for that and get three first rounders which would be awesome obviously i uh, would get th those three picks i know philadelphia probably doesn't have all those picks in real life you guys know you can't have the draft order correct but uh getting a couple of those would be great obviously you also have uh maybe another team uh that could be interesting like i know washington would be interested in, in deshaun watson they should attempt to do it but uh, I'm not really sure what you're going to be asking for over there. There's a lot of teams that would love to have Deshaun Watson. Carolina is also another interesting one. Miami was an interesting one, but we all know now that Brian Flores is gone, does that change Deshaun Watson's mind on if he wants to go over there? So you could, you know, try to get Miami to give you, uh, you know, a couple first round. They have th we could get three first round picks from Miami, which was the obvious choice. And that's the one that Deshaun Watson has been most interested in, it sounds like. So. Uh, we could do this where we get Deshaun Watson uh, to Miami, which makes sense. But like I said, now that Brian Flores is gone, does that change Deshaun Watson's mind? Who knows? So um, Carolina is also another interesting one, like I said. But we just know that Watson needs out. We need to get Watson out of Houston. It's just time. So I'm kind of leaning towards Miami or Philadelphia. And I think Philadelphia has too many like high picks for me to make a trade with them just because like I said, I don't think Philadelphia has all these picks that high in real life because obviously Philadelphia's in the playoffs. San Francisco's in the playoffs. So, um, yeah, I, I don't think their picks are this high. But let's just go ahead and go to Miami, who's been the most interested team. And uh, let's see if they would still do this. So, obviously, we're not just going to get one first-round pick. I want all these first-round picks if possible. Uh, so, we're going to get 11 and then two first-round picks. And, of course, if I could add more, I would, but you can't. So, Watson for three first-round picks. And, obviously, you'd want even more if you could. But, unfortunately, there's only three trade slots. So, Let's go ahead and make this offer. And they're actually gonna decline it. Okay, so they actually decline uh, the Watson trade. So let's try just two then, I guess. They still decline. Okay, so if we're not gonna be able to do it Miami, we could go to Philadelphia instead and trade them away, I guess. So let's go to Philly, I guess, if they wanna. So these picks might be too high for Philadelphia to wanna trade him though. Uh, yeah, so it's, it's way too high. All right, what about six and eight instead? Because we need to get Watson out of here for something. 
Uh, okay, this might be a little bit harder than I thought. Today's video is brought to you by Prize Picks. Prize Picks is a DFS player props website that allows you to go over or under on players' projections. You're facing no one in the world but yourself and the numbers. Let me go ahead and show you a few examples of how it works. So on this example, I went for a flex play on Debo Samuel, Cordell Patterson, LaVisca Cheneau, and David Johnson, who were all able to hit or go under the numbers, which led to me getting $170. That's just one example. And here's another example where I didn't actually get everyone correct, but I still didn't walk away with nothing. Aaron Jones was able to hit over his fantasy score. Chase Edmonds got over 10 fantasy points, and Mercedes Lewis got under 18 and a half receiving yards. But unfortunately for me, DeAndre Hopkins did not get a touchdown in this game. If you do decide to sign up, my link is down in the description below. Use code CRUSHABLES. They are offering 100% deposit match up to $100. All right, so I can't trade with either Miami or Philadelphia, so we're going to go to the Washington football team and trade to Sean Watson over to the football team for the third pick in the draft, Jamin Davis and Cameron Curl. Like I said, in real life, Houston's going to want a lot more picks than this. But we get a young middle linebacker and a young stud strong safety. I'm sure Washington would not want to get rid of Cameron Curl. Jamin Davis, I'm not sure about. Uh, but the third picks, we get we get some assets. We walk away with some assets, get rid of Watson, and we bring in a couple of guys to help, uh, you know, strengthen this defense a little bit. Jamin Davis, still a uh, very young player. And Cameron Curl, like I said, very young as well. So I like both those picks. We got Jamin Davis, Cameron Curl. Uh, we have Justin Reed, Desmond King, and then Jimmy Moreland. So... Uh, a lot of uh, good, you know, good, good things, I guess, on the defense now, or not a lot, but you know, it's a start of things. It's start. It's a start. So now, now the only other player that I would like to trade here is I think I do want to trade Brandon Cooks away. Uh, the man is already 28 years old, and I just don't really see how he fits this team. Laramie Tunsil, I wouldn't mind getting rid of either, but I guess we can keep him for now. But I am gonna go ahead and I think I'm gonna trade Brandon Cooks away as well. So let's try to trade Brandon Cooks and start selling. All right, so we're making a trade with the Cleveland Browns, trading away Brandon Cooks for Greg Newsom in a third round draft pick. So just like that, we're able to sell a little bit even further and get Greg Newsom as another corner here, which I feel pretty good about. So just like that, we have Greg Newsom, Desmond King, Cameron Curl, and Justin Reed. So, I mean, the defense secondary looks pretty good. We also have Greener here, who is 25, so I like that. All right, so other than that, I think the rest is going to have to come through the draft of free agency. But we have set ourselves up pretty good. Uh, through free agency uh, obviously there's a lot to be done here a lot to be done so marcus cannon is 34 years old um if i'm actually curious to see what this guy's con let's go look at the contract situation as well and see if there's anybody else we need to cut on this team so we go and take a look at the salaries i know laramie tunsil's making a ton of money on this team uh so let's go ahead and see who's making the most amount of money so laramie tunsil we have justin reed we have marcus cannon yeah i had a feeling he was going to be making quite a bit of money so uh, we save 16. Okay, so we get literally no penalty by cutting him. So I think probably makes sense to just trade away or just cut uh, Marcus Cannon. We freed up $6 million in cap space. Okay, is there anybody else that sticks out? Um, so we have Eric Murray uh, savings. We've been getting a penalty of one and a half million. 28 year old. We have uh, Fairbairn. We're not going to cut our kicker though. And then savings, 500K penalty. So yeah, not, I think uh, the one guy. We wanted to get rid of was there so there'd be i mean i could also get rid of eric murray uh we'd save about five million dollars getting a penalty of one so yeah i think i'm gonna go ahead and cut eric murray as well but other than that that's it so now we're gonna turn our attention to free agency where we freed up just a little bit more money so obviously we want to try to acquire the youngest players possible i think so we have about 81 million dollars in cap room obviously this team's not gonna go for Devonte adams i don't think that makes a ton of sense um, and then it's also going to be interesting to see how Houston feels about Davis Mills. Because I think Davis Mills, towards the end of the year, actually kind of proved himself a little bit. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see if they see him as a quarterback option, uh, as they if they see him as a long-term quarterback, or do they want to go in the draft and draft a quarterback. I would assume they're going to probably draft one, but you never really know. All right, so you know it would be fun? Uh, you know, I don't know what Henry Ruggs' situation is. Obviously, he probably wouldn't come back to the NFL. It doesn't sound like it anyway uh jacoby meyer so i don't think i'm actually gonna sign henry rucks that would be cool uh but based off what he's done in real life i, I don't think that's gonna be a thing so uh, i do want to sign a couple weapons on for in free agency though because we literally have like none uh obviously so i'm gonna go and probably go ahead and sign like maybe jacoby myers i saw deontay harris who i think could be interesting so we're gonna sign deontay harris i think to a deal we need any type of uh, you know wide receivers we can get so deontay harris we can offer him a contract uh, we have Rashawn Penny, Sony Michelle, 
Uh, we really don't have a running back either, do we? Jeez, man, this team just has nothing. Henry Ruggs, we're not going to go for, obviously. Jacoby Myers, also maybe another interesting filler here. Just take a flyer on a young player. Nothing crazy. Maybe we'd give him just a one-year deal this year. Kind of see how he performs or something like that. So we'll go with that. And then other than that, I mean, I'm not going to go for Gallup this video. We're not going to go for Marcus Williams. We already have a safety. Uh, we do need uh, offensive line help, but I don't think it makes sense to go for like the biggest offensive lineman out there. George Font, Cam Robinson. Let's see. Do we have any decent pieces out here that could be interesting to bring in? Um, not really seeing a ton. Yeah, not a ton of options here. So this offseason is probably not going to be the best for us. But uh, at least we have a couple. We only have a couple negotiations going right now. If I decide to add more, then I will show you. But right now, all we've really offered are two free eight or two wide receivers because. We needed some wide receiver help. So hopefully these two decide to uh, accept. So after day one of free agency, the only player that decided to sign with the Houston Texans was Ronald Jones. We didn't have a running back. And I thought, you know what? Ronald Jones obviously has been kind of pushed out of the backfield with Leonard Fournette in Tampa Bay. So maybe if Ronald Jones got another opportunity elsewhere, it would be interesting to see what he could do with it. So I do want to look at my negotiation real quick. So it looks like the Colts have blown my offer out of the wire with Jacoby Myers and so same with Deontay Harris. My uh, my offers are starting to get blown out of the water a little bit. So um, we definitely need at least one of these guys. So I do want Deontay Harris a lot. Not going to lie. Uh, so I'm going to offer him a contract again. And if it's not good enough, we're a second offer. We'll, we'll increase it a little bit. We need some type of weapon on the outside. We literally have nothing right now. So um, that will be the best offer he can get. And then Jacoby Myers, I don't think I offered him that great of a contract, uh, great of a deal. So we can uh, increase this to like 7 million and that would give us, uh, we're still pretty far off. Maybe we just let the Colts get this guy. I don't know. Maybe I don't really. Yeah. You know what? I think we're just going to let the Colts grab Jacoby Myers. I'm going to have my offer on Deontay Harris stand. Uh, all right. So there's not a ton of other defensive options as far as guys I want to bring in on this team either, which is really unfortunate. Uh, Javarius Ward, uh, is here, but we don't need another corner. We can honestly maybe draft a corner, uh, low key. So Zach Pascal, but I'm just not really seeing much else. I mean, Demarcus Robinson would be interesting. Ooh, a left guard who's 25 years old. Actually, that sounds kind of nice for us. Let's go ahead and, uh, go for Connor Williams here. Potentially that could be a good option to bring in. We need some type of offensive line help. So anything we can get is going to be good. Obviously, um, it's going to be, we're going to need a little bit more money in this, uh, Offer. So I'm going to go ahead and offer just a little bit more and see if that does it. And that would put us at second. So we got to put maybe a little bit on the bonus and then we'll go like this and potentially get him. And that's going to put us at number one. Not sure we get him, but that was quite a bit of money to throw at him. Alan Lazard. Alan Lazard also could be another interesting one. Anthony Averett. So uh, now that some free agents are being signing, I'm seeing a little bit of different players. We have Derek Barnett. Uh, 26 years old. You know, he could also be another interesting one to bring in. I'll go ahead and offer him a contract. Uh, so just like that, we're starting to where, you know, just, all right. So my negotiation is Deontay Harris. So it looks like we have offers on all three of these guys. Let's see if we get them. Let's go to next week and let's see if we are able to snag all three of them or not. So we are going to get everyone but the left guard, which was pretty important, but we didn't get him. So we got Derek Barnett and we got a wide receiver in Deontay Harris, who's 24 years old. So again, um, we are definitely more going to be leaning towards the draft. So let's just go ahead and take a look at our draft situation, see how many draft picks we actually have, because there's a lot that needs to be done here. So looking at the draft, we have number two and number three. We have a second, a third. You have two thirds. Okay. So and after so basically after so we basically have one two three four five five picks that could be used on the team this year so that's i guess a good sign hopefully we're able to draft pretty well there and get some guys to fill in uh and play immediately so that's basically what we're gonna have to rely on so offensive line is gonna have to be at least two of those picks i think do like ronald jones coming in i mean do we draft a quarterback i think we do i mean our tight end is brevin jordan who i think is pretty young so maybe he gets an opportunity we'll see uh, but for the most part, outside linebackers are still a huge need. Offensive line is still a need, a huge need. Brevin Jordan, I believe, was a rookie last year, so 22 years old. I mean, I, I would imagine Houston would want to see what he can accomplish. I think he's made some plays for them. So still $15 million in cap space, still a lot of money. Um, but I just don't really see anyone else to use it on. We need outside linebackers, and I don't really think there's an outside linebacker out here. So we're basically going to be joining. Uh, we got Shaquem Griffin. Yeah, no, no, that looks good. Right outside linebacker, nothing. So yeah, we're basically be turning our attention to the NFL draft. So 
we're gonna have to hit big we're gonna have to uh do good things in the draft so hopefully we're able to accomplish a lot the draft is gonna be important i'm not, i don't really see anyone else want to get in free agency so hopefully in the draft we're able to draft pretty good and bring in some players that can help immediately all right man here we are so it looks like the pittsburgh steelers are ahead of us by uh one pick obviously we have back-to-back -back second and third so hopefully we can get something good here it, it kind of depends on whatever the steelers take so whatever the steelers take is what i'll go off of i'm really debating on drafting a quarterback here i'm not gonna lie really debating on it so i don't know man we'll see we'll see if uh we're able to draft a quarterback here Kayvon Thibodeau goes number one okay so that was one guy i was kind of interested in but let's go ahead and take a look at what else we have on the board so we have uh a quarterback i am pretty much debating i think i'm gonna take the corner and i think i might take a quarterback here honestly uh this draft class obviously as you guys know if you've been watching the video i mean we could use evan neal as well man oh my goodness there's a lot we could do here so maybe we draft the offensive lineman because corner is not as big as help as i think we i think i'm torn i think we might have to draft evan neal here and i, I think i want to take matt corral here as well i'm a little torn on what i want to do here i think i draft the offensive lineman i mean i'm debating on the corner as well we were able to get greg newsome in though so maybe we don't really need a corner as much as i thought we did uh so I'm going to draft the offensive lineman. We need offensive line help badly. So I'm going to draft the offensive lineman. Evan Neal, I think, makes a lot of sense. And then I think it'll be interesting to see how the Houston Texans feel about Davis Mills. Now, personally, I liked what I saw from him at towards the end of the year. But I know in this game, he's not going to be all that good. So I think I do want to maybe, or we could just draft the corner and pass on quarterback. I'm torn here. Do we just roll with Davis Mills? I don't really know if Houston, the new regime, is going to want to do that. That's the, that's the, that's the question. Draft a quarterback or just go with the corner and just rely on Davis Mills to, uh, you know, they drafted Davis Mills last year and like later rounds. And he, he was okay. He was not too bad. 16 touchdowns, 10 interceptions on the year. Obviously, a rookie season. Rookies usually struggle. He can sling the football. I'm torn, man. I'm really torn. I mean, this is a 50 50 decision. I think it could go either way, but. Since this is only a one-year off-season rebuild, and I know that, uh, obviously, that the Texans could draft a quarterback, I'm going to go with the corner. I, I might regret this. I'm going to roll with Davis Mills. I'm going to roll with Davis Mills. I'm going to draft the corner, add some more talent to the defense, and I might regret that decision, but I think it. I think it's the one I'm going to go with. So, uh, I feel decent about it, but we have some more, we have some more uh, picks, obviously, we need to address. So, uh, let's go ahead and uh, take a look at our lineup real quick, just, just real quick. So, now we have... Well, I don't know why. Uh, I guess it doesn't show you. Never mind. So let's just go and make our selection. So, all right. So we got the corner. Uh, is there any quarterback that fell down here? We have Charles Cross. We have, I mean, we still need to add to the offensive lineman 100%. Uh, so, and then the defensive line could still use some help as well. We have two, or we have two third rounders. We already have tackles, but I could technically move Cross or Evan Neal inside. I mean, we need offensive line help, so I'm going to go ahead and take Charles Cross here, I think. I'm going to feel pretty good about that. So, Charles Cross, we can play him inside, potentially. Uh, we also have a third-round pick, so let's go to the third round and uh, start to look what else we can grab. So, in the third round, I keep looking at just lineup accidentally. Not, I'm not meaning to, obviously. So, all right. So, let's go in and uh, look at what's on the board still. So, make your selection. This is our first third-rounder, so we have another one. Uh, Ventrell Miller, Trent McDuffie, Haskell Garrett. Uh, I mean, linebacker help is definitely something we definitely need, but Nolan Smith, JT Daniels. We could, I mean, mm, I think I might go with Haskell Garrett here as my first third rounder because we do need defensive tackle. So, yeah, we're going to go with Haskell Garrett. I'm going to play Haskell Garrett immediately. He's going to be our defensive tackle. So, uh, hit development defensive tackle i like that and then we still have another third round uh third rounder in this draft so uh whatever we can get obviously so let's make our selection and i think we had a fourth rounder and i think that's pretty much it after that it, like falls all the way to the sixth round we could technically uh draft a wide receiver as well we definitely need wide receiver help we need a linebacker there's a lot so uh no one smith d impact block d injury c power move c tackle okay Left outside linebacker was okay. And then let's look at the wide receiver that we have an 80% completion rating on. D catch and D deep route. So this guy is obviously not it. Break, B break, B injury, B spec catch, B short. Route. Okay, spectacular spectacular catch is good, but his catching is a D. So, ooh, I don't know, man. Do we draft? Uh, hmm. 
Uh, you know what? Let's draft him. We need a wide receiver anyway. So we'll take a chance on him. He's a slot. Archetype slot. I mean, needed a rookie wide receiver anyway. So that's fine. All right. So let's get him uh, advance the next round. And uh, we'll uh, look at our pick. So I think we have a early fourth rounder, I hope. Let's see. It's going to be towards the end. That's that's uh, That sucks. But all right. Let's make our selection. This is going to be our last pick in this draft. So um let's make it a good one merlin robinson i mean we need to draft an outside linebacker so i think no matter what this guy looks like we just have to go for it so i uh, see finesse moves b man cover c block shedding he's actually not that bad so we'll draft merlin robinson all right man that is going to be our draft so did we do good i don't know i, I mean i was literally torn on whether i wanted to draft the qb or not but it's fine i'm i'm feeling good i'm feeling pretty good so i think we did a good decent job we got offensive line help we got we got a corner. I mean, this team, I think we did an all right job. Let's go ahead and take a look at our team. So uh, looking at it, we drafted Evan Neal, obviously. We drafted a corner. We drafted Charles Cross. We drafted Haskell Garrett. We drafted a wide receiver. Uh, so everyone kind of falls off after that. But I am happy we got the corner. We got Evan Neal, Charles Cross. We can move him inside or move Evan Neal inside. E either way, we'll do that. Or, you know, this also makes Laramie Tunts a little bit more expendable. Wanted to trade him, potentially. Which actually... Do I want to do that is the question. Probably not. I probably won't do that. So uh, let's go and look at our lineup next week and see what this team is going to look like. So this team is rolling with Davis Mills, it looks like. So let's go ahead and take a look at our lineup real quick. Uh, so obviously, probably not going to be in the playoffs this year, I would imagine. But I think overall, you know, this is going to be a tough uphill climb for the Texans. It's going to be a tough offseason. So not too surprised. So basically looking at it, this is what it looks like. So we have Deontay Harris, we have Nico Collins, we have Davis Mills at quarterback, Ronald Jones, and then we obviously have, uh, we also drafted a tight end, or no, I guess Charles Cross could play tight end for us, I don't understand that, Haskell Garrett, so obviously it's because we have like no uh, depth, uh, obviously, so defensively, uh, this is what it looks like, I'm going to throw Haskell Garrett in there, to be honest with you, just because I feel like, why not, so we'll have, I mean, the outside linebackers are just terrible, man, it, it does not get worse than that, so unfortunately, it, it is what it is, so, and then offensively, I think I want to go ahead and move either Laramie Tunsil or Charles, I'm going to move, I'm going to move Charles Cross to the right guard, I don't really know how much he would go down in overall if we did this, so I'm going to go ahead and move him in there, because I do want him to play, so I'm going to move him to right guard, he might hate me for this, or left guard, I guess, is fine either, so he might low-key hate me for this, uh, so he was a 71 overall. Now he's going to be a 71 overall. So he didn't go down. So we'll have him play on the inside. And yeah, this is what our offensive line is going to look like. So, I mean, it's a little bit better. It's got some pieces on it. Our tight end, our wide receivers. So <laughs> this team's probably going to suck. Let's be honest with ourselves. But you know what? I think it was a decent offseason at the very least. The Sean Watson trade could have been way better. I wanted first round picks. Obviously, I wasn't able to really get that. I got a top pick in the draft. Uh, we got some corners now as well in Derek Singletary and Greg Newsom, J uh, Justin Reed, Cameron Curl. So uh, linebackers are still trash. But you know what? That's okay. Davis Mills, the show is yours. Can you become a really good quarterback for this team is the question we have for you. Let's go ahead and simulate this year after that hectic offseason. And uh, let's see if we can just be somewhat impressive. I doubt it, but you never really know. Nothing else on this team. We did tie this season with the Jaguars looks like. So we did get a tie on the season, which is good, I guess. But other than that, obviously it was bad. Uh, very bad. Uh, it looks like we're about to get fired as well, which makes a ton of sense, obviously. So um, let's go ahead and take a look at the stats before I fire myself. So uh, I do want to see who made the playoffs, of course, real quick uh, after I look at the stats. So Davis Mills, how'd you do? You were terrible. 17 touchdowns, 15 uh, interceptions. I think it'll, I mean, 4,000 yards. I think it will be interesting to see this offseason whether the new regime that comes to Houston will believe in Davis Mills or not. I guess I wait, they didn't fire their GM, did they? So maybe it'll be interesting to see if the Texans GM feels if Davis Mills is the answer or not. I mean, they'll have a high draft pick to draft a quarterback if they want to. Ronald Jones, 871 yards, 11 touchdowns. Decent year, but nothing crazy. Receiving wise, uh, KJ Hill Jr., okay, uh, came out here with the 1,200 yards, Nico Collins with 10,000, and Deontay Harris with 800. Uh, so KJ Hill Jr. had a good year. Uh, normal development, 69 overall. W, 25 years old. Okay, maybe another breakout star here in Houston. you love to see it. You'd have to pick him up in fantasy that year because he wouldn't be drafted, obviously. So uh, as far as uh, you know, our defense, we had three interceptions from Jamie Davis, three from Derek. We had one from Lonnie Johnson. And then uh, sacks-wise, 
10 and a half from Derek Barnett, seven from Jonathan Green, or two and a half from Lonnie Johnson, and two from Haskell Garrett. And then uh, past deflections, we had seven from Derek Stingletary. And then our Sting Stingley. I don't know why I'm saying Stingletary. Stingley. Derek Stingley. I always say these names wrong, bro. I suck. Oh, hey, Sting. Or Desmond King got a touchdown, I guess. So he got a pick six, it looks like, or a fumble return. I don't know. So W, it looks like it was a pick six. So good for him. All right. Um, what about our offense? Our offense was 29th in the NFL. And then defensively, we were... Doesn't even show me. Probably bad. Okay. Well, point scored 32nd. Yeah, we were pretty bad. So, all right, man. Let's see uh, what this GM meeting is going to be all about. Talk to your GM about the future of your... Uh, hey, coach, we expect a lot more out of you this season right now. The plan is to relieve you of your duties. Anything you have to say, accept your fate. I understand this is business. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Wow. Well, look at the face scan of David. Actually, I'm looking at the wrong person. Never mind. I guess David Coley is kind of in there. This organization has been nothing but class. I'm going to miss coaching here. You're fired. You're fired. Obviously, we knew we were going to be fired. So, all right. Let's go ahead and take a look at the playoffs real quick, though. Um, so, we got Cleveland, Pittsburgh, Kansas City, Seattle. Okay. All right, guys. I mean, we can go ahead and see who wins the Super Bowl real quick. Uh, so, Sim to the Super Bowl and see who is going to be in the Super Bowl. And it'll be interesting to see if anyone even offers me a contract. <laughs> Uh, so view playoff bracket. Who's in the Super Bowl? So we have Cleveland and Dallas. Okay, Cleveland and Dallas. Let's see who's gonna win it all. If it'll show me anyway, I don't really know how this is gonna work. All right, simulating to next week. And uh, okay, let's. I guess 30 to 24. So Cleveland won. All right, man. That is going to be it for me. All right, let's see if I even get an offer. I'm actually interested to see how a free agency coach works. I have no offers. No, nobody's offered me anything. It, it looks like it came in advance. Oh, wait, there it is. All right, let's see if uh, anyone offers me a contract real quick. I'm just curious. No, it, it's it, it's not looking good for me. It's not looking good for me to be a head coach in the NFL again this year. So, all right, guys, that's going to do it for me. I wish I could show you the lineup that I put together. But you know what? Overall, the Texans, you know, have an uphill battle to climb with what Bill O'Brien was able to do to that team. Uh, obviously, he traded away DeAndre Hopkins for pennies on the dollar. But thank you guys for watching. Definitely leave a like if you did enjoy but for now this is crushables 2 and peace thank you guys so much for watching make sure you click here to watch another video that i know you'll love